Hey everyone, the St. George election this year is incredibly important. Go to votestg.com to see who's running and what they stand for, or visit us at our voter booth at Digby's Market, Red Rock Bicycles, or down in the park. What happens if we get another dysfunctional city council? Like, how do we, uh, how, how do we, how do we work through that? It, it is. It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. It we got to get out the vote. You have to get out the vote, and and because people, so I was on the city council for seven years, and we didn't always agree on everything, but we could leave friends at the end of the day. Yeah. Um. And. And nobody was trashing other people to, you know, it was just, it was a cohesive group. Mm -hmm. And we were all there for one reason, because we love St. George. Yeah. I mean, I love this city. All four of my kids, I'm fortunate enough that they all four live here. I have 11 grandkids. They're all here. That's awesome. Well, one's in Santa Clara, one's over in Hurricane. They're all here. They're they're here. Yeah. You know, and so they're close. And I think I told you this when we were talking privately, but- when I was at the the Fourth of July concert and the events down there, I had a lady come up to me and sh- because they asked me to just speak, and I did like forty seconds of you know, yeah, <laughs> Happy Fourth of July. We're glad you're here. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And so she came up to me after and she said, "Are you the mayor?" And I said, "Yes." And she said, "I want to tell you something." She said, "My husband and I are here visiting from Texas," and she said. Your city reminds me so much of the town I grew up in in Alabama. She said, even though you have a large population, it still feels so quaint and it's so clean and friendly. And she said, it feels safe. And she said, I just love it. She said, we will come back to visit a lot. And that's what you want. Even though you're growing, you still want people to feel safe in your community. You want them to feel like everyone's welcome. And you need a council that feels that way too, that, you know, we can like each other. We might not agree on everything, but... What do you think about expanding the size of the city council? I don't know if we're ready to have like a seven council. Even even cities larger than ours mostly just have five. Mm-hmm. Um, I think... The county commission could use five county commissioners instead of three. I'm very surprised that we only have three on that. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised at that. Yeah. I, you know, I've I've thought a lot about what their role is, too. And I need to have – I probably need to bring some a couple of them on, too, to get their perspective on, you know, what what is it that they're – what's the county plan? Because it seems like St. George is kind of the leader and the county is over here in a supporting role. Where is that normal? It seems like the normal role is the county is going to take a little bit more of a lead role. Is we've always had a really good relationship with the county, and you know they're they're over all the unincorporated areas, and and so which are not very many. It, no, there's not very many, but there's still some. And that when people complain about ordinances and different things in in the city, I'm like. When you move into a municipality, you need to know what you're moving into, yeah. you know, that you agree to follow some th- some rules. Yeah. Um, the person next door to me, I don't want him to run an auto shop out of his home right. because I'm in a residential area. Yeah. But now if you move up to Vail, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Yeah. So. Well, and then I, I would listen to the last uh, commissioner's meeting and they were going over the new rules for short-term rentals at, on the county level and they've had to get excruciatingly detailed and minute as to what those rules are, you know, a lot like a city has. So, you know, some of those things are going to change and evolve as time goes on, right? You get somebody that uh, takes a, a liberal a, a liberal approach to what the rules are and they try to, you know, expand some things out. I've seen some massive houses in county land that if they've turned them into basically resort compounds, right, right where they host, you know, 25 families or whatever and they do these big old events there and and in Leeds for example that that kind of destroys the quality of life if if you're exactly. you know you're a neighbor but you're not like right next door you could still see the chaos going on or lights and music playing that echoes if you through the hills you choose to live in somewhere like Leeds you're choosing to be in a really quiet specifically secluded, for a reason yeah yeah, yeah. A secluded place but so yeah, this election, I'm nervous because mm-hmm. there are so many candidates. I've never seen so many run before. Yeah. 
We only had two drop out. It was started at 18 and then only two, two have dropped out. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, I've interviewed, I think I'm at five of them so far. Only 10 of them signed up for interviews because I had to put a deadline. I'm like, I'm going to run out of, of just airtime and availability to do it. So I think I'm going to only end up getting 10 interviews, even though the ballots are going to go out here pretty quick. I mean, we got 15, out on the 15th. Yeah, 15 days. And I think this is going to air after because I still have uh, Jimmy Hughes uh, interview and Greg MacArthur's interview that I wanted to make sure that I got as many of these candidates, because those were, those were longer interviews, not necessarily about their candidacy, but just their perspective on what's going on in the city. Right. And I wanted to give them some additional, n- not to give them a, a, an advantage or a disadvantage, but I, I wanted to make sure that they could be on the record for, you know, what their, their thought process was. And, and I did the same thing with Danielle as well. Her episode came out uh, last week, but so this one will come in out after, after there. So the ballots will already be out by the time this comes out. So getting educated on who the candidates are, I think it's going to be really important. So before you f- finalize your ch- the checkbox, they got to be in a week before. When do they have? I guess you could you could drop them off the, the day, day of, of, which is September mm-hmm. 5th. So you'll have plenty of time. You'll have the ballot in your hand. You'll be able to you know do some research and understand the issues. VoteSTG.com is a website that I created that was trying to get all the candidates to be able to compare them. So I gave them seven questions and then you can click on each candidate and see how they answered all the questions to get the same question. Um, so I, again, I only had 10, 11 of them actually fill it out after texts and emails and like trying to get a hold of them. Like, hey, will you fill this out so I can, you know, give give people a, an equal spot. Ballotpedia, have you ever looked up Ballotpedia? No. So Ballotpedia, they're kind of a, a similar organization of, of what I'm trying to just do at the local level, but they just give you, it's just kind of the straight facts on candidates, right? You're going to get this ballot in the mail. You can put your address in and say, hey, this is what's going to come up on the election. And they haven't been able to get to the local level yet. They na- namely stay at the federal level or a state level. But um, kind of the organization of their website is what I'm trying to do for the city of St. George. And somebody came up in, in one of the public uh, discussions on the budget and they were, you know, basically stating that they felt like the city should do a better job at, you know, educating everybody on, you know, what's happening. And my thought was like, well, it's not the city's job to employ like Robert, what's his last name? Myers. Robert Myers. He did such a great job of like breaking down the budget, his presentation for the budget, not only just for the city council, but also for, uh, you know, just a citizen to go in and, and look and see the breakdown. I think he did a, a fantastic job at that, but that's not necessarily his job to educate the citizens. It's his job to educate the city council. We elected the city council to make the decisions on our behalf, right? Um, But it was private organizations. It was the media's job to do that historically. But we don't have local media anymore. That seems to have disappeared. So this is what votestg.com is what I'm trying to... um, trying to piece together, but it's on a shoestring budget. It's expensive. And I, I'm doing the WordPress. I, I'm not a website builder. I'm like doing it myself, trying to like nickel and dime this thing together. I'm like, no wonder nobody does this. It's so difficult to do. I know. But at the end of the day, you know, getting the issues and the candidates in front of everybody is really important. So that's that's really what the kind of the goal of the podcast is And I is think too. that's why a, a lot of people have said, Why aren't there any forums or debates? Well, how do you do that with 16 candidates? I know the chamber is going to do like a meet and greet. Uh, August 10th. August 10th is... And tourism office is doing something as well. I think that's August 8th. Okay. But it's impossible with 16 candidates. Yeah, and that's on the primary, right? And then once we get through the primary, Once you get through the primary, you're down to six people. We're going to be down to six, and then then it's... Then you get into the nuts and bolts of things. Then we're going to really need to get in the nuts and bolts. So... um, We've been on for an hour. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go. I appreciate you coming on. I hope I hope we can keep going and do this again. We can. Um, what What do you want to leave everybody listening? What What's a, What makes a good the, the last question? What makes a good city council member from your perspective? Being that you were on the council for how long? Seven years. Seven years, and then it, now sitting in the mayor's seat, we're here like I don't have to vote now. I can just kind of. Just, just watch and 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 guide. No, this What's... has been a lot more difficult. Believe me. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fair enough. I yeah. I, I'm just, that, that was yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because you take all the blame for things that you don't even get to. You're vote like I didn't on. even vote. I didn't even say anything. <laughs> I know, but you know it's part of the That's job. That's a good point. Um, 
a good city council person, uh, Danielle Larkin, is the epitome of a great city council person. Joe Bocut was the epitome of a great city. I love Joe. I miss Joe. Of, of a great city council person. They went to the events they were invited to. They responded to emails. They were open and listened to people that they may not agree with, but they listened. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's the biggest key. Just listen. Mm-hmm. You don't have to get along with everybody or believe the same thing somebody else believes, but just listen to them mm-hmm. and read your packet thoroughly. We get those a week in advance. There is no reason you should come to a council meeting unprepared. Yeah. That you should know what we're going to be discussing, maybe have questions in advance that you have for the developer or staff or whoever. And that is a good city council person. Somebody that I I try and pride myself to get back to every single person who calls or emails me. And that is a lot. I'm Mm -hmm. on, you know, and... But I want them to feel heard, even if it's a nasty email. Mm-hmm. Well, there are a few that I've just delete because there's no reason to re- respond. But even if it's been somebody who's attacking me for something, I'll just say, thank you for emailing me. We're just going to have to agree to disagree on this. Right. You know. <laughs>